Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this destination spotlight on the wonders of Thailand. We will start in just a few minutes. So in the meantime, as always, let us know where you're tuning in from in the chat. And to those of you joining us on Facebook, welcome. We are so happy to have you. Let us know in the comment box where you're joining us from as well. Hello, Judy, welcome. Oh, Paul from Worcester, hello, welcome. We got Lisa from North Carolina, Steve from Brooklyn, Alba, welcome. Michael from Texas, welcome. Tucson, Texas. Uh, we have Joe from Cincinnati, Charlotte from Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, we got a few folks from Canada. Welcome to our Canadian friends. Uh, we have Glenda from Idaho, welcome. Cheryl from Georgia, welcome. Barbara from Tampa, welcome. We have Lynn from Tampa as well, welcome. Tammy from Pennsylvania, Diana from Philly, Kristen from Pennsylvania. Oh, thank you all so, so much for joining us. We will start in just a few minutes. Tony and Lori from Rhode Island, thank you for being here. Sharon from Texas, Jeremy from Montana, Deborah from Sarasota, incredible, thank you all. Oh, Pat from Nebraska, hi. Great. Wonderful. All right, let's get things started over here. I know it might be a little late for some of you watching, uh, but thank you so, so much for joining us. My name is Claudia and I am from the Go Ahead team. And for today's travel talk, we are virtually traveling to Thailand to learn more about the top sites and places that you must, must visit on your next trip to this magical country in Southeast Asia. We are joined today by local expert Rasha, live from Bangkok. She's here to share her stories and expertise, and she'll introduce herself in just a moment. Now, the plan today is to walk through some webinar tips so that you can maximize your time with us. Then Rasha will take it away and tell you all you need to know about Thailand while sharing her insights and stories. And then of course, we will open it up for questions during the Q&A portion of this webinar. If this is your first webinar, welcome. We are so excited to have you here. Unlike a normal video call, your cameras and microphones are completely turned off. You will only see and hear me, your host and your invited speaker for tonight. We can't see you and we cannot hear you, but of course we always wanna hear from you. So throughout this travel talk, please feel welcome to use the chat box to interact with each other and the Q&A box on Zoom to post questions to our speakers. And if you're joining us on Facebook, you can use the comment box there to ask your questions throughout this presentation. Now let's, let's get started. Uh, friendly and food obsessed, hedonistic and historic, cultured and curious, Thailand tempts visitors with a smile as golden as the country's glittering temples and tropical beaches. Every year, more and more tourists visit Thailand and with good reason, from white sandy beaches and top-notch hotels to historic temples and mouth-watering food, there's simply too much to take advantage of in this tropical paradise for visitors. Now, before I introduce your speaker, I'd actually like for you to answer this question. The question is, have you been to Thailand before? Now, a poll is gonna pop up on your screen if you are joining us on Zoom. And what I would like for you to do is choose from the following. Option A is I have never been to Thailand. And for those of you joining on Facebook, please let us know in the comments uh, your answer. Option B is I've never been to Thailand, but I'm interested in going. Number C is I visited Thailand before. And then option D is I have visited Thailand before, but I want to visit again. Now let's check out these results. So it looks like most of you have never been to Thailand, but are interested in going. Some of you have visited Thailand before. So 52% never been to Thailand, but I'm just in going. So Russia, why don't we give our audience tons of reasons to visit Thailand? Um, all right, let's continue here. Now, Thank you so much for participating. I'd like to introduce your speaker, 
uh, for tonight. Rasha, Rasha, would you be so kind to introduce yourself to our audience watching? Hi, everyone. Hello, greetings from Bangkok. Um, my name is Rasha. So I work full time for EF and I'm operations manager for EF tours in Southeast Asia. So I look after all of the EF tours program in Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And I've been with EF for about almost a year now and very excited to take you to an, on a tour to my amazing Thailand today. And hopefully you'll learn something and get really excited about coming to this part of the world. So stay tuned. Amazing. Thank you so much, Rasha. Now, some of you might not be familiar with Thailand's location. So Rasha, can you walk us through the geography of Thailand? Yes, um, we are very far away from you. In the US, we are pretty much on the opposite side of the world, but we are located in the heart of Southeast Asia. So we're known also as the land of smile and probably throughout this presentation, I hope you'll learn why we're known as that. Um, we have Cambodia and Laos border the country to the east and northeast. We have Myanmar lies to the northwestern side of the country. We have Andaman Sea to the west. We have the Gulf of Thailand to the southeastern part of the country. And with a population of 70 million people, we are divided into 77 provinces, with Bangkok being the political, commercial, industrial, and educational, as well as entertainment capital. And fun fact to share with you, do you know that this country, we have a former name of Thailand as well, it's called Siam. And you'll hear this throughout when you're traveling in Thailand as well, that Thailand was officially called this up until 1939. And we also the only country in Southeast Asia that has never been uh, colonized under any Western powers. So that will reflect throughout the history and throughout your travel as well. So, so yeah, that's a bit about Thailand. Great, thank you so much, Rasha. Now, before we begin, actually, we have a pre-submitted question from Georgina. And Georgina is wondering, when is the best time to go to Thailand, the least hot and humid and least crowded? Well, yeah, thanks Georgina for sending these questions. And wow, I mean, it is hot and humid in this part of the world. I see some of you have already been, but I would say the best time to go, I mean, it's all year round. We're, we're really amazing to travel all, all year round, but the least hot and humid are probably during the winter. So that is November to February period. But of course you're gonna have to wait in with a big crowd as well. A lot of people come to Thailand during that time. It's, it's considered peak season, the high season here. But if you want something, probably less people, maybe consider middle of the year time, like May to September period, this sort of thing. But generally, always a good idea to come anytime. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Now let's dive right in. Let's talk about the top wonders and places you must visit when visiting Thailand. Now our list begins with the Royal Grand Palace. So Russia, can you tell us why this place made the cut? Yes, and this is number one place really to visit in Bangkok, right? And so Grand Palace is undoubtedly the most famous landmark in Bangkok, probably in Thailand, considered to be the spiritual heart of the Kingdom of Thailand too. It was built in 1782. And for 150 years, this was the home of the Thai King, the Royal Court and the administrative seat of government. The palace complex features a number of impressive buildings, including the Temple of Emerald Buddha, or Wat Pragya we call in Thai, which houses the famous Emerald Buddha dating back to the 14th century. And although today the palace is no longer the official administrative seat of the government or home to the Thai king, but the original buildings used for these purposes still stand and can be toured during your visit. And it is worth noting um, at this place as one of the most sacred sites in Thailand and also when you visit temple throughout the country, strict dress code will be applied to all visitors. And, and you have to, to sort of like follow a bit of cultural um, do's and don'ts. So men are required to wear shirts with sleeves and long pants. So no bare feet are allowed. Women's must also dress modestly. So no bare shoulder and see-through clothing. But if you, don't worry about it. If you arrive at the destinations and you not forgot something or you feel like, oh, I should have bought that or this, um, there will be a booth at the entrance that will provide clothes to cover you properly for just refundable deposits. So Thailand's also very good at assisting you just in case you, you forget to bring anything with you, but yeah. Perfect, that's really good to know. And this palace is stunning. So it's definitely worth visiting uh, when you find yourself in Bangkok. Now, next on our list is Wat Po, otherwise known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. Uh, what can you tell us about this temple, Russia? 
Yes, another great uh, place located actually right next to the Royal Grand Palace. So once you visit your, your trip in the Grand Palace, you can come to right next to Wat Poor, the Temple of Reclining Buddha. And it's also a must-see for any first-timer vis visit to Bangkok as well, known in Thai as Wat Prache Dupon. Right, so the word Wat in Thai means temple, and you'll hear of this a lot throughout your travel and through this through this talk as well. So Wat Po was built in the 16th century as a late Ayutthaya period monastery. As one of the largest temple complexes in the city, it's famous for its giant reclining Buddha that is 46 meters long, covered in gold leaf. There are several features of Wat Po complex that makes it a great tourist attraction. The complex comprises of four chapels, which have nearly 400 Buddha images. So this earned Wat Po the title as the temple with the highest number of the Buddha images. So really, this place is also great if you want to learn about Buddhism, if you want to get to know the culture a little bit better. But I have one fun fact to share with you about this place. Do you know that Wat Po is known as the birthplace of Thai massage? And I'm sure many of you have probably had Thai massage before or interested in, in getting one. So Wat Po became a center of knowledge and study about traditional Thai medicine. A massage school was founded here that still exists today. So perhaps after a long walk through Bangkok or through the temple, you can try foot massage or shoulder massage with just less than 10 US dollar. You can get a pretty good one that will perfectly round up your visit to the complex. So. Oh, Rasha, we actually have a presumptive question from Barb and Barb is wondering, can you talk a little bit about the ways that we can help protect the antiquities, the monuments, the temples that we visit in Thailand? Yeah, thank you, Bar, for sending this question. It's, I can tell you're already getting prepared and you want to be respectful, right? So for sure. And, and it definitely can start with dressing modestly and dressing appropriately when you're entering temples and all. But that's a benefit also with traveling with Go Ahead. And you have the local guides, the tour director with you, who also can provide the cultural do's and don'ts and, and you know, provide tips with what to do to be, to be respectful to the local culture, to the temples or places you visit, right? So definitely starting with dress code and it is hot and humid in this part of the world. So, so do bring clothes that is comfortable to wear, maybe just like a scarf or a shawl to cover your shoulder for those of you who are, who are women. Um, that can be a great way as well. And, and yeah, just learn more before you come as well of what the culture would be in this part of the world. And But Thai people are very understanding of foreigners. And we, a lot of times with temples and monastery, we there will be, places that provide instruction in English for you to follow as well. So, so Thailand is very good at that, I would say. So don't worry too much about it, but definitely keep your hearts and mind open to, to learn more. Perfect. And then Rasha, speaking of, of dress code, we have a question from Michael and Michael is asking, is there any particular dress code for Wakpo specifically? Um, not, not specifically. Uh, generally, entering temples are very kind of like standard practice just cover your shoulder make sure like like no like tank tops or anything like that so so general monastery visits yeah that would be okay perfect thank you so much all right so next on our list is the Ayutthaya historical park so Russia what can travelers expect to see here Yes, yeah, so now we're traveling just a little bit, uh, two hours drive outside of Bangkok on the northern part of the Bangkok. So Ayutthaya Historical Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So for those of you who are interested in following the UNESCO places around the world, this is one of them. And it's well renowned as the old capital city with the longest history of Thailand. Lasted 417 years through the range of 33 kings. It was founded in 13th century. So Ayutthaya was the kingdom of Thailand capitals up until 18th century. It developed into a booming city and was very influential in the urban planning and design of current capital city of Bangkok. As you can see in the photo, the park comprises of the ruins of temples and palaces of the ancient kingdom. The site is home to Buddhist temples that features a wide variety of religious art and artifacts from the 14th to 18th centuries. You will see many beautiful architect intricate details while visiting. But do you know such a glorious empire, how did it came to an end? So the old capital of Thailand came to the brutal end when it was attacked by the Burmese. Much of the city was devastated by fire. The city fell in 1767. So most of the city was destroyed and what is left of these lyrics and temples are still found in Ayutthaya today. Many of the palaces were made of wood, which did not withstand the fires that destroyed the capital, which is why in front of you, you mainly see um, stone temples remain. 
So Ayutthaya Historical, Historical Park, definitely one of the most impressive ruined cities in Asia. So during your visit, you wander through the awe-inspiring and once-thriving ancient metropolis will make you feel as though you have stepped back in time. So definitely cannot miss. Russia, and speaking of temples, we have a question from Douglas and Douglas is wondering, can pictures be taken, uh, taken inside the temples that we visit? Great questions. I think, and again, a lot of times um, there will be instructions to show you right in front of a uh, like Buddha statue sometimes, like do not take photos. So yes and no. So you would see that if there will see a sign popping up. So most of the time, yes, you can take photos and you can do it re re respectful, of course, like not, um, you know, in front of people's face. Like I've had people taking photos of me when I'm like praying to the Buddha's image oh. or something like that. So, so be respectful in those things that people also go about their daily life at the temple. Um, so, so be mindful and step back and just observe your surrounding. But, but yeah, photos are welcome, only except in certain places that they will just put up the sign that do not take photo. Perfect. Thank you, Rasha. And then an, an additional question is, uh, can women wear shorts? Um, I think I, I think you refer to short shorts, right? The one that like above your your knee level. Where yeah, you can so, see your knees, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so not those ones. So okay. make sure you're like like lo like long trousers or long pants that would recommend or um skirts that is covering your knee. Yeah. So okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So up next, and this is a little bit of a mouthful, Rasha, but it is the Wat Fratat Doisu Tep. Rasha, what do you know about this temple? Yeah, well tried, Claudia. So Wat Fratat Doisu Tep. So this is in the north now. We're coming up to the northern Thailand in the city of Chiang Mai. So Wat Fratat Doisu Tep is one of northern Thailand's most sacred temples. So the temple is often referred to as Doisu Tep, as this is actually the name of the mountain where it's located. So the original founding of the temple remains a legend and there are a few varied versions of it. The temple is said to have been found in the 13th century when the first stupa was built. Um, it, the complex comprises of pavilions, pagodas and statues. Um, the structure is an incredible piece of architecture and skilled craftsmanship and a beautiful example of Northern Thai culture as well. You can visit a museum that is um, constructed inside the premise where you can find ancient lyrics photographs and old pieces of temple wares. Also the pavilions contain living quarters for the monks at prayer hall Ubosot. So generally for those who are looking to extraordinary experience um, full of peace and tranquility, uh, Wat Pratat Doi Sutep is a place to be. And, and as local would say, you haven't really gone to Chiang Mai unless you have been to Wat Pratat Doi Sutep. Perfect, all right. Well, speaking of Chiang Mai, uh, we have an upcoming the world famous Chiang Mai night market. Now, Thailand is of course known for its very varied street food. And Russia, I need, I need to add that I am a nervous traveler when it comes to food. So can you tell us more about the market and what are some of the food items that travelers should definitely try when they're there? Yeah, so basically, well, you already heard from Claudia. If you're wondering where in Thailand you should buy souvenir or try out street food, this is the place to be. So Chiang Mai Night Market. And you will find hundreds of stalls. You will also see and hear dozens of street performers, musicians, and bands playing. Combine this with delicious and tasty Thai dishes, street food that you can buy very cheaply. And you have a whole evening of entertainment for a very affordable price. So Chiang Mai is also uh, Thailand's capital of unique handicraft. So you will find mostly handmade quality instead of uh, sort of like mass produced goods. So yay to supporting locally made products. So great place to buy souvenir too. And before I talk about food, I know many of you are interested in Thailand because of you love Thai food, right? But I also wanna talk about some of the souvenirs that you can buy too, because when you visit the foreign countries, you're probably wondering of like what you can um, buy for your loved ones back home, right? So I have my, my top three list. And my first one is, Anything to do with um, Thai silk, authentic Thai silk is very famous here and it's special because of hand weaving process and production. So scarf, tie, pillow cover, cushions, anything will make an excellent gift. Um, thai spices um, also make a really, really good gift for your friends who love to cook back home. And I think my favorite um, product definitely to recommend or to bring to my friends to oversee is a spa product. 
So you can choose various like body spa products. And Thailand's very famous on, on you know, kind of wellness tourism too. So we have amazing like aromatic soaps and scents, essential oils, compressed herbs that are beautifully packaged to take home too. So one of the most popular scents is um, the unique jasmine scent that um, make a great, great gift, great gift, yeah. And speaking of food, um, yes, uh, this place is, we are very, very famous for our street food, like Bangkok also, Chiang Mai as well. So while there are many options for you to choose from, ranging from noodles to curries to dumplings to spring rolls at a very affordable price, but if you want to try something very unique and have a sort of like new culinary adventure while on holiday, why not try eating insects? <laughs> <laughs> and many of you are probably like, what are we eating that? <laughs> yeah, so there are edible bugs that are actually popular with locals and tourists as they are light and surprisingly healthy snacks too. So they're usually deep fried, they cook with Thai herbs and spices. So some of the most common one you can try is grasshoppers, mm -hmm. silkworm, cricket. So these are like beginner lists. But if you really want to go all out for those of you who like, I want to go big, so scorpions and cockroaches are there for you to try. So, so I know it's, it's a lot and I'm, yeah, it could be outside of your comfort zone, but, but as Claudia was mentioned, and I know a lot of you too, like you want to be cautious of what you want to eat at street food, right? Because it's very different from what you used to back home in a, a, a Western standard too. So my tips for eating street food in Thailand is that definitely watch your food being cooked. And I think this is why when you're on street, you, you have that luxury of seeing food being prepared and make sure that the food cooks is hot as well. You, you can watch um, the people at the restaurant or the people on, that provide the vendors um, providing and how they prepare your food and use your judgment. Um, same thing where you would find anywhere. And so perhaps also look for foods so with uh, long lines, especially with locals. Some places that really specialize in one or a few dishes. So they know, so you know, like the, they prepare the ingredient like quite fresh. So, but yeah, I think in it, you can just start with a small amount of street food that you're comfortable with and kind of like grow, grow your, grow your from there. But of, of course, obviously, um, when in doubt, just ask your local guides or ask like, you know, your tour directors that uh, they're more than happy to, to help guide you too. Perfect. And uh, Rasha, while you were talking about the grasshoppers, Douglas in the chat mentioned that he had grasshoppers in Mexico and that they were not bad. So maybe next time he's in Thailand, he could try the grasshoppers there and compare and see which ones are better. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have, let me, let us go through some of these questions before we continue Russia. So mm -hmm. um, a question from Ed and Ed is wondering, are dollars, are US dollars accepted in Thailand or would we use Thai currency instead? Yes, we would use Thai currency. So the local currency called as Thai baht. So it's kind of like baht, but baht, so B-A-H-T. So Thai baht, yeah, that's a local currency. So USD is not accepted. Perfect. And then two more questions related to food. So one is from Michael and he's saying that he's very allergic to sesame oil. So is sesame oil used very much in Thai cooking? Um, not really. Oh, there, there will be, but I think with anything with food, dietary or allergies like that, you can always tell the, the restaurant provider the, or the vendors to, to be mindful of those things. But yeah, I, I think it's, you, you, you have to, to also inform people as well so right of course and then another question related to food is is all thai food spicy <laughs> the <laughs> most common questions <laughs> um, the answer is no you can there's a, uh, versions of spice that you can also um, request um, so so definitely you can tell that you eat very, you don't want to try spicy but i would love to recommend and try to and and want you to try a little bit of spice but of course, you have to be careful with, with how much to spice their food. But usually with restaurants or, or vendors that cater to like foreign tourists, they know that the, the Thai foods also have to kind of like be in a very like moderate versions of spice. Yeah. But once you're in Thailand, why not give it a try? Yes, of course. Well, we have more questions coming in, but let's continue for now and we will get to them um, in a bit. So on to one of our favorite responsible travel activities on tour is, of course, visiting an elephant sanctuary. So, Russia, what is this experience like for our travelers? Yes, well, this is 
pretty much my most favorite experience to share with any travelers or any friends from overseas who are coming to visit Thailand because elephant is a national symbol of Thailand and have played many important roles throughout the history. You would see it all over our country too. Um, so at EF, we champion animal welfare on any tour and any destination. So particularly in Thailand, we partner with elephant sanctuary that are dedicated to conservation efforts and ending mistreatment. You won't find elephant rides or elephant performances of any kind on any EF travel programs. And elephants are truly my favorite animal too. They are, they call it, they're known as the gentle giant because they're truly gentle and you really learn a lot from them. So during your visits, you can really get to watch um, elephants feeding, bathe, and interact with each other in their normal social patterns and learn about the history of these majestic creatures as well. So know that your visit to these local sanctuaries goes a long way. This helps support their conservation efforts and the preservation of these amazing um, animals that we that is so dear to many of us. So, but yeah, we we are proud to have support these um, sanctuaries and and really allow our travelers to get to know these um, gentle giant as who they truly are. Yeah. This is so wonderful. I love to visit an elephant sanctuary one day. Now, next stop on our list is the Pangna Bay National Park. Now, this is an iconic place in Thailand. So Russia, tell us what makes this place so special. Yes, and good try on pronouncing, Claudia. So it's a <laughs> national park. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is called Ao Panga National Park also. Um, it's situated along the coast of Panga province, south of Thailand. So we're now, we're now in the south of Thailand, in the Andaman Sea, very close to Phuket. And what you're looking at right now is Gok Pandi, is a special Muslim fishing village floating on the sea in Panga Bay. The village has a school, a mosque, um, as you can see, a health center, lots of small souvenir shops a handful of large restaurants facing the sea. There are even bungalows offering overnight accommodations worth seeing. It's, it's a, but what you see on the bottom parts of the photo is the football field. Or, or we'll, here in this part of the world, we call soccer as football. Just FYI, I know in the US, you call, you call American football as football, right? But here, soccer is football for us. So <laughs> football field, <laughs> yeah. And it's very interesting and unique place too. And, and Panga Bay National Park in general is, is well known for its limestone rock formations rising out of the turquoise and diamond sea. You will find many white sandy beaches and beautiful caves. The water surrounding the islands are also consistently calm. So very ideal for canoeing. Um, we have the um, James Bond Islands, which I think is in the next slides photo. Um, it is a famous landmark in Panga Bay. So many of you have seen this probably, but in 1974, this beautiful island was a location in a James Bond film, The Man with the Golden Sun. So hence its name. The, the islands belong to the Alpanga National Park and is also known as Gotapu. So Gotapu can be translated as nail or spike islands as reflecting its shape as you obviously seen. So this is one iconic landmark that you cannot miss in, in Panga. Yeah. Perfect, all right. Now, next on our list, we have the Wat Rong Khun, otherwise known as the White Temple. Uh, so Russia, what does this temple represent and what can we expect to see here? Yeah, so now let's travel up north again. We are in Chiang Rai and you hear it's different from Chiang Mai in the past. So there, the R and the I, okay. So this is in Chiang Rai. Chiang Rai is the northernmost province of Thailand. And Wat Rong Khun, or the White Temple, uh, as they know, and one of the most recognizable temples in Thailand, built by the famous Thai Buddhist artist named Ajahn Chalam Chai Kosik Pipat. And by this point, you will probably see that most temples in Thailand are gold, right? But Wat Rong Khun is white. So the white color signifies the purity of the Buddha and makes this temple also very stand out. So from the outside, the White Temple looks stunning, also with its thousands of small mirrors shimmering in the sunlight everywhere you look you discover something interesting like statues, morals, arts, and flowers. The entrance will look like the gate to heaven. So it reflects um, the Buddhist belief um, with all the white statues. And you will see here the bridge of the cycle of rebirth, which is also showcasing Buddhist beliefs in reincarnation and cycle of life. I know many of you are interested to also learn about Buddhism, right? You want to learn about meditation, perhaps also. So I think when you come to Thailand, there's so many great opportunities that that you can learn more about this, the, the culture and religious that is, we are a majority a Buddhist country. So 
And, and what is also really unique about this temple also is inside the temple where you will see wall paintings of um, Michael Jackson or the Spider-Man. So not very common place that you will find in, in <laughs> many other traditionally temple. So you can look at his creations for hours and find something new every visit. So fun fact is if you don't, even if you don't have to go, but make sure you go to the toilet in the white temple. It is arguably the most beautiful toilet building you have ever seen. And so is this really a temple or is this an art museum? Maybe you can decide that when you visit Thailand, but surely if you are interested in modern architecture and want to see something completely different than anything you have ever seen before, the White Temple will be a great experience for you. Wonderful. Now we have a present made a question from Jody and Jody is wondering how much free time is provided during the guided tour? Yes, uh, thanks Jody for submitting this question. I think there's this, um, this quite a good balance and good structure between um, the amount of free time you have and also some structure with being on a tour. So, so definitely um, if you are interested to, to know what free time you can do with some activity, when you travel, go ahead, you have your, your local tour directors who can provide you those informations or those suggestions as well that um, where like in certain places where they're more free time than other and it's probably some places that's more structured than others. So I, I would say there's a, there's a fair balance. Yeah. Perfect, thank you very much. Now, speaking of things to do during your free time or actually uh, taking on an optional excursion, the next place on our list is a very iconic place, the PP Island. So many pictures have been taken at this place. If you have, uh, Windows computer, you might have had a photo of the PP Islands as an option for your desktop background. So Russia, can you tell us more about these beautiful islands? Yes, and just get it out of the way in case you were wondering how to properly pronounce this. I know Claudia did a really good job. It is <laughs> PP, not Fifi, okay? <laughs> I know many people pronounce as Fifi. I think this is the way it's it, it kind of written in English. Um, so got PP or PP Islands, a very popular archipelago located just uh, 40 kilometers south of Phuket. So very often a day trip from Phuket. So PP has pristine beaches, stunning rock formations and vivid turquoise waters teeming with colorful marine life. They make an excellent day trip from Phuket due to the distance. You can swim, snorkel in the crystal clear blue water, some of the best, some of the best water in Thailand as well, and admire one of the world's most abundant coral reef system. So as you see in front of you here, the Maya Bay. So probably the, what makes this place super famous is, is from the movie The Beach of in 2000 featuring um, Leonardo DiCaprio. It makes this place become a world renowned um, that that every travelers, and I'm sure probably if you have visited Thailand before, you probably have been to, to Maya Bay back in the days. But recently, um, the Maya Bay has been closed. So after three and a half years of closure in order to restore the marine ecosystem, Maya Bay is once again open to tourists just earlier this year. So now it is more beautiful than ever. And before its closure, for those of you who don't know much about Ma Maya Bay um, as well, it drew millions of travelers per year. It was a destination that suffered greatly from over-tourism from uh, coral reefs and beach areas also have been damaged by constant tourist activities. So Thai government took that very seriously um, a few years ago and, and ordered, this, ordered this place shut down. So to continue preserving this place for our future generations and kind of like promoting sustainable travel as well, um, we would highly recommend to, to search um, the pic this picture's bay by practicing leave no trace principles and of course, um, including picking up your trash and you know wearing chemical-free sunscreen. So that would goes a long way. And as people say, right, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Perfect, Rasha. Now speaking of the PP Islands, we have a question, um, and they're wondering: Can tourists swim anywhere on the trip? So I'm assuming here during the visit to the PP Islands, they can, right? Yes, um, so in the PP, I think on an optional excursion, yes, you, there will be opportunities for you to swim and snorkel and kind of like explore the underwater world a little bit. Um, so yeah, there will, there will be opportunity. But in terms of Maya Bay, because it has just been uh, open recently, we have to follow the local authority guidelines and whether that is allowed or not, I think it's still kind of like a changing, evolving situation because it's just, it's freshly coming out from, from um, kind of like conservation period and coral reefs that, and as we all know, coral reefs takes 
years to regrow. And so this place is still like far from recover in a way. So, so I think that's, that's going to be an evolving um, situation, but definitely you get to visit um, Maya Bay and see it's glorious. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Now, next on our list, we have the Damnoen Saduak floating market. Now this market is arguably the most popular floating market in Thailand, and it is highly recommended for visitors who are staying in Bangkok. Uh, Rush, can you tell us a little bit more about this market, please? Yes, and wow, Claudia, you have done a really good job of pronouncing Thai <laughs> so far. Thank you. So well done. So yes, floating market, I think, is one of one of another um, activities or destination that makes this part of the world very famous, right? And you can also buy lots, lots of souvenir here as well. So Damnan Sadua is originally the canal name. So in the old days, rivers and canals or klong in Thai uh, were very important for Thai. So not only to serve as a daily commercial channel, but it was a bustling channel for transportation too. So people also use the Canal River just to go by about their daily life. So at the crack of dawn, people come to buy many kinds of fruits and vegetables. So at the Damnan Sadok floating market on this kind of like old school wooden boats, as you see. Um, as it gets more popular, vendors also have come up with a huge variety of fresh produce, food, other local products. Um, probably I would recommend to come in the morning also just to kind of serve observe the daily life of the local people a little, uh, a little bit. And also you can take a rowboat or a ride, a long tail boat that um, you get to have that this really like genuine experience of the floating market, like, like what you see in, in the photo too. So long tail boats like that takes you around the village and the community that you can get to see people's life a little bit and buy, buy more souvenir too, support the locals. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Now, before continuing Russia, I want to... Um, answer some of these questions related to food, even though we're going to talk about food uh, in just a second. But Rasha Pam is wondering, what are the spices that uh, travelers should try when they're in Thailand? Oh, great questions. Um, I think, have, I, I'm sure you've eaten at Thai restaurants. Thai restaurants are everywhere in the US, right? Oh, right. All across the world too. So you can start with, um, I think th those ones that have already been quite famous, like the green curry, the yellow curry or the red curries are a very good start. Um, the tom yam gung or the prawn shrimp also very famous. So those are the base. So those are the ones that I would highly recommend to try as well. So indeed, you can bring for people back home because it's quite a, a standard famous dish in Thailand. Yeah. Which one is your favorite? I would talk about it. Ah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, speaking of food and spices, next on our agenda is talking about the top things to try when you're in Thailand. So, Raja, can you share your favorite things to eat and drink in Thailand? Yes, and this is my favorite part to share now. Um, I, cannot, I, I can't wait to share what my personal favorite is. So, the first one on the list um, is Pat Grapao, so stir fry basil. I, if you haven't had this at a Thai restaurant yet, it needs to be your next meal so that you can get to taste the uh, Thailand's national drip, national dish. So if you think it's Pad Thai, if you think it's Tom Yam Gung, no, it's not. It is Pad Gra Pao. This is what Thai people eat all the time, every day. It's quick and easy to make and delicious. So Pad means fry and Gra Pao is a Thai name of the holy basil. That is one of the main ingredients. So this is best to serve with a crispy fried egg with a slightly runny yolk. <laughs> I'm already so hungry <laughs> about this now, but it is really the most popular and the most beloved Thai street food dish of all time. So I highly recommend you have to try Pad Kapao. And it comes with all spices level too. You can you can say Pet Nid Noi is like a little spicy. Yeah, so yeah, good to try. And the second on my list, um, is the mango sticky rice. I know some of you were leaving some, some comments on the <laughs> chat box. Um, mango sticky rice is super famous in, for, for this part of the world and it also makes a lot of people want to try when they come here. So in Thai, we call this khao niao, mamuang. So khao niao is sticky rice, um, the gluten sticky rice. Mamuang, it means mango in Thai. So for Thai mango sticky rice, the sticky rice is steamed, mixed with thick coconut cream and sugar, Pair with perfectly ripe yellow sweet mango, syrup with some extra coconut cream on top, as you see, to make it even better. And finally, often you will see some crispy yellow mung beans on sprinkling on the very top as well. So kaunia or mamuang or mango sticky rice is definitely you have to try. And you can find this 
in street food, most restaurants, yeah. And the next on my list is, well, you are visiting the Northern Thailand. And if, it is one, if there's one dish above all others that can be described as Northern Thailand's signature dish, it is this one, it has to be khao soy. Um, so this mouth-watering blend of soft and crispy noodles is served with a tasty curry broth. And you can come with a choice of beef, chicken, or pork. You'll find this classic Northern Thai dish in towns and cities throughout Northern Thailand. So make sure you give this a try while you're in the North. And number four in my list is durian. <laughs> I don't know if you have heard of this world famous, the world smelliest fruits before, but this kind of like spiky outer shell looking and it has a really, really strong smell. So this put a lot of people off and a lot of people just not wanted to try it because of how, how bad it smells. And do you know that is it has been banned also from the public transport, many places from bringing into hotels, or planes in many countries in Southeast Asia because of its smell. Um, but durian makes all kinds of um, variety of foods. It makes chips, pizza, cakes, coffee, you name it. So, but what does it really taste like? So it's a strange, it's a strange combination of probably savory, sweet, and creamy all at once. But I, I guess you just have to give it a try when you come here. So why not give durian a try? And uh, last one on my list, which I think you also can find this at restaurants in the US too, because it's quite common, um, is a Thai iced tea, or in Thai we call it cha yen. It's orange, the color is orange, so you know you're ordering the right thing is with the orange color. So Thai people, uh, we do not drink much hot tea in this part of the world because it is so hot in, in Thailand. So cold iced tea um, is very common drink, which you can buy from street food stores on every street pretty much. It is a mixture of black tea with condensed milk, sometimes sweetened with sugar, um, best served with ice. So great for the hot, humid weather in country. And so chai yen often used to sort of counterbalance the spiciness of Thai cuisine as well. So perfect drink to try while in Thailand. Oh, everything looks delicious, Russia, and it is dinner time in the US. So I am <laughs> extremely hungry now. Um, but thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for walking us through the top sites and places to visit in Thailand. So now let's take a few minutes to go over the tour that we currently offer to this country and then another similar tour for those interested in this part of the world. Now, I should mention that the Thailand borders are open, but the entry requirements right now are a little bit tricky. So as soon as we start running our tours, um, we will definitely let you know. Um, so because of this, we recommend that you book your tour for 2023-24. And if you have an upcoming departure for 2022, please rest assured that we will get in touch with you should plans change. Now, first we have the Thailand adventure tour of Bangkok, Chiang Mai and the islands. Now, this is our brand new adventure tour, which also means that it is a small group tour. This itinerary is 14 days long or 17 days long if you'd like to take the extension into Cambodia. The tour begins and ends in Bangkok and all of the included highlights were mentioned on this presentation. And of course you have many more uh, highlights on the tour when you go. Now, uh, the next tour is our Vietnam and Angkor Wat tour. This tour is 15 days long or 17 days long if you extend your stay into Bangkok. The tour begins in Ho Chi Minh City and ends in Bangkok. And some of the included highlights is a traditional Vietnamese cooking class, which is super fun. Uh, you also have visiting, of course, the Angkor Wat complex and then the Hoi An's covered bridge. All right, well, I think Russia, it's time to take a few questions from the audience. So please write in your questions in the Q&A box on Zoom. And if you're on Facebook, please use the comment box there to pose your questions to Russia and myself. Now let's begin with a pre-submitted question, Russia. Uh, Mary Ann is wondering, what is the best way to prepare a traveler for a trip to Thailand? Yes, wow, this, this question is it's <laughs> big. <laughs> but I think generally, um, of course, we're traveling during um, 
the pandemic. And, and Thailand also, we, we suffered just as much as the rest of the world from, from the pandemic. So of course, I think anything COVID related is definitely important, like your face mask, your hand sanitizer and all that jazz. But but I think in general, also the best way to prepare um, is to research the destination before you come, learning about the culture, the history, and kind of read online. There's so many resources also online now that providing what, what you can expect when you're entering the country, because we are we are very different from the West um, standards in many, in many things. But we I think we offer something very unique um, to, to the traveler as well. So definitely um, do a lot of research before you come. Um, maybe learn some Thai. I think, I think that is my best tips probably because Thai people appreciate when foreigners um, try learning our language. You do not have to get it perfect, but I actually forgot to teach you guys. Um, so try starting with sawati, sawati ka for, for female um, and then sawati krap for male. So what we do also is we put our ha the hand like this together in the middle of the chest and then we, we greet each other like sawati ka, sawati krap. So you can do this and and try or do you know the word like thank you is kop kun. I know it. I know it's like a lot and probably very different. But but once you like continue doing it, people really appreciate it when 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 you do in the country and and they might give you you know like lower prices when you try to bargain on yeah. street food shopping. <laughs> so Russia, if I were to come to Thailand and I see you, as soon as I see you, I would put my hands like this and I would say so what the cap. So Adika, yeah, but we also, our cultures are very like, um, like hierarchical in a way. So we only, we greet like proper formal greeting to maybe to like older, elderly people to like my parents' generations or my teacher, but to us in like the same generation, we just like, so Adika, and we just don't, we don't have to really do the hand gesture so much. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. Now let's look at some of the questions that we have in the Q&A box. So Number one is, is the water safe to drink or do they use bottled water? Yes, I'm, I'm glad somebody asking this question. It <laughs> is, it, tap water is not drinkable here in this part of the world. Um, so do not drink the water off from the tap, but there's bottles of water available everywhere. I would actually recommend to bring your own bottle, um, your own like reusable water, or bo bottled water. Um, there are places that, you know, we have filter water for you and you can reduce the plastic pollution too because we are also suffering from a lot of like plastic bottles like just everywhere, right? So do bring, definitely do bring um, a bottle with you from, from the US, yeah. Perfect. All right, next question. Oh, this is an interesting one. So uh, where do you go for mid-range to high-end shopping by Thai or Southeast Asian designers? And who are some of the famous Thai designers? <laughs> wow um definitely bangkok i think i think for, for for this for this question i would definitely suggest um for anything mid-range or luxury is bangkok and there's bangkok is such a big modern western really like style of, of like city as well so you will find anything from like chanel prada like all those like big brands but there's so also so many local thai brands too and I mean, I'm not a huge fashion person to tell you, but <laughs> you know some. I know some of the the brands that make into like a like kind of like world stage. Maybe call Asawa. So A S A V A or Asawa is also a very famous one. Um, there's a few other ones too, but yeah. But because I'm I'm usually I love the anything to do with more like handicraft, the one with Chiang Mai. Um, kind of style. So I also used to live in Chiang Mai uh, a few years back. So I, I love mainly to like um, support like really like local handicraft products and kind of like in that part. So maybe I'm not the best person to answer to <laughs> in terms of like big fashion brands, but but there's many Thai designers that that are uh, really making uh, international um, scene. So so I think research more and, and when you come, yeah. you yeah, explore. Yeah. Perfect. And I think of course, when you're on tour, your tour director is a great guy to tell you where to go if you want to shop for a particular designer um, or a specific product. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of your tour director for um, things like that. Now, next question here is, what are some of the off the beaten path only in Thailand experiences that you can have apart from the usual tourist things? 
Yeah. Oh, this is tricky questions, right? So I think with your free time activity, you, as we mentioned, we talk about like a sort of like a good balance between free time and structure. I think you can definitely use your free time activity that, you know, whatever, whatever, whenever that is um, to explore something that is not scheduled on the tour and wherever the cities that you visit in the, being the North or the South or just Bangkok in general, there will be some, some kind of like hidden or unknown um, places that you can that you can explore close by but definitely again I think it, it depends on locations where that is and and where you where you could go but your tour directors will will give you that um, suggestions and tips for sure yeah perfect all right now the next question is does the tour include a Thailand traditional dance is there any sort of musical um, activity or anything that we do on tour uh, that you know of? Mm, good questions. I have a feeling that we do. Um, I think if you look on the website, um, there might be in the north um, with the Kantok traditional dinner and dance. Yeah, I think it's in it's in Chiang Mai. Yeah, so and I think we do a, quite a variety of activities as well in the north, like not, not only just temples and, you know, we do, we do have like cooking class, um, that you can explore like Thai cuisines a little bit, but I I think there is. I'm not sure if this is if it's on Go Ahead or someone else, but yeah. Perfect. Now the next question is: I see you offer two different tours. Yes, the Bangkok, the Thailand Adventure Tour, and then the Vietnam and Angkor Wat tour. Would it be possible to do both tours back to back? I mean. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if you yeah. find dates that, think, that correlate, yeah. of course you can do them back to back. And I think it's a great idea, right? Because Russia, we were just talking about this before we got started that the flights are so long to get to that mm -hmm. side of the world. So if you're already there, mm -hmm. why not take advantage and just do both tours back to back? I think that that's a great idea. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Let me see if there's any more questions in here, make sure to submit them in the Q&A box. I'm just gonna go through the chat real quickly. Okay, so we have a question from Marcia and Marcia's uh, wondering, what about security on tour? Can you talk a little bit about that, Rasha? Yeah, so, so safety probably, right? That's, you're referring to safety and security situation. Um, I think coming, that's also a benefit of coming, traveling on a group too, is that with, with kind of like um, us in the country, like I know me working in operations, we are, safety is number one priority for anything we do pretty much. And so this is, um, we are carefully assessing everything that, you know, we're using all the suppliers and hotel buses, restaurants and all that. So we are carefully handpicked it for you. Um, and this is my full-time job. <laughs> So, so I would say I would say we're doing our best, but definitely it always when you travel overseas, there's always a risk. There's always going to be um, something unexpected that that you don't want it to happen, or it happens. But so yeah, that's why I do a lot of research, knowing that um, what are some of the issues that can be, some of the risks can be, and 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 yeah, I'm I'm not gonna lie, like it's sometimes. Um, people get into certain situations and, and all that. And, and I think nowadays what we have to, to be careful. So it's, it's a COVID handling, right? Which I think us being with EF, we are really um, strong. We, we want to protect our travelers and advise them what are the risks as much as we can too. So, yeah. Perfect. And I agree, Rasha. Thank you so much for, for tackling that question. Um, well, I think that we have gone through all the questions. So uh, let's talk about some of the upcoming travel talk webinars that we have in store for you. So we have two travel talk webinars coming up. We have a virtual St. Patrick's Day celebration coming up next Tuesday on March 15th. So if you are a St. Patrick's Day uh, fan, please make sure to sign up for that one. We're going to show you how to make an Irish coffee. So that should be really fun. And then the next one is a destination spotlight on Belize on March 29. So you can sign up for any or both of these by going to www.goheadtours.com slash webinars. Um, and Rasha, thank you so very much for taking the time to share your stories and your insights and for answering our questions. It was Truly a pleasure. And I learned so much in just one hour. 
To everyone joining us at home, thank you so much for joining us and for participating. We hope you truly enjoyed yourselves. Uh, Rasha, do you have any parting words for our audience? Yes, definitely. I would like to say the, the word in Thai is uh, ka. So ka is thank you. Um, you can remember this word when you come to Thailand. But definitely thank you so much for, 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 staying, for staying, you know, engaged and wanted to learn more about Thailand because it's already a great first step, right, to learn more about the country. And, and we cannot wait also to see you. It's been a long time and many people in this country, you know, everything in Thailand is really built around tourism. Too, so we cannot wait to, to meet you and learn from you. And this has been a long pandemic for everyone. And But I think um, as the world slowly opening up and as everything slowly eased, um, we would love to welcome you back to our country. We have so much to offer and really there's a lot of things are probably more beautiful than ever, probably less crowd than before. If for those of you who <laughs> Thailand, you know. <laughs> But, but yeah, I, I, if you haven't signed up, I hope you do. And I hope to see you in Thailand soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rasha. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. And please get some Pad Krap Hao at some point. Um, Pad Krap Hao, yeah. <laughs> and Cha <Chayen>. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Rasha. Nice to see you. Bye. Ciao.